Hello, welcome back to my channel or welcome for the first time if you're new here. My name is Bryn, I'm transgender and non-binary and I make videos about those topics. So as most of you know, I had bottom surgery about a month ago and I wanted to make a video about how things have been going for this past month. If you're new here um, or you're not sure about me, I am, as I said, I'm non-binary and I was assigned male at birth and the bottom surgery that I got is uh, essentially male to female bottom surgery even though I do not identify as a woman. Now before I get into it I do have a video that that talks about why I wanted to get bottom surgery and whatever that I will link up here and I also have vlogs that I took for I think like the first two weeks after surgery um, which is a lot more detailed and um, I filmed as things were happening or right after things were happening so it's a little more raw rather than me reflecting back on the things that have happened so if you're interested in that I will have that playlist linked below but yeah time to get into it so I had bottom surgery on March 30th with Dr. Del Corral in Baltimore Maryland at MedStar Franklin Square Hospital Dr. Del Corral is like the most amazing person I've ever met <laughs> I couldn't have asked for a better surgeon, honestly. He, not only is he very good at the work that he does, uh, but he's also very personable, he's very friendly, and he's very caring. I've heard of people who sometimes will have surgery and their surgeon just kind of ghosts them after surgery and doesn't respond or doesn't respond in a timely manner, which can be pretty scary when you're going through <clears throat> such an invasive surgery and you don't know what to expect you know sometimes even if things are going okay or there's a small thing that's like not going right you know you can like you don't know what that means so you can kind of assume the worst so it's important to have a surgeon who is there and can reach out to you and does reach out to you and Dr. Del Corral is 100% that person um <clears throat> I had a small problem with wound dehiscence I've had a small issue with dilation um and I've had to get medication refills a few times and he's very very quick to respond he's called me multiple times to check up to make sure things are going well um, just to check in and see if I'm doing well or if I had a specific problem to see if it's been resolved or if it's starting to resolve and I <clears throat> I really appreciate that from him I don't really have many words but honestly like I couldn't give a better review <laughs> like he's I I couldn't have asked for a better surgeon and also the staff at the hospital was incredibly kind incredibly trans friendly um I will say they I'm pretty sure they all called me she but I never corrected them because it didn't bother me but and I don't know if I ever actually like said that my pronouns were they and them I'm not sure but regardless they were all very kind and very nice and very good <laughs> um 10 out of 10 for Dr. Del Corral the hospital and the staff so the first thing that I want to talk about which I don't think I mentioned in my vlogs um is phantom limb I guess um so when I first had surgery hold on let me back up so before surgery my brain instinctually did think that I had the body part that I have now there were times where basically it was like I would go to do whatever go to the bathroom take a shower do something with a partner whatever the case and my brain would kind of be like why is that there but it still recognized that it was there and knew how it functioned so after surgery when I didn't have that body part anymore my brain was like what the heck what what do you mean that's not that's not there anymore and it was kind of weird I in the beginning I had a lot of um sensations where like I felt like I had to like I had to scratch like I had an itch on my previous body part and I didn't have it anymore plus everything down there was numb so it was like really weird but I think it may have been my nerves like re reconnecting or something I'm not really sure but it was a little bit of a strange time and it took a little bit for my brain to catch up but I will say now that it's been a month I really don't have much issues with my brain <clears throat> thinking that I have my old body part um probably after two or three weeks that got better so 
Um, and it wasn't terrible, but it was just like strange and I didn't really like it, but it seems to be mostly fizzled out by now and I'm sure it'll continue to get better as the numbness goes away and my my brain can connect with the feeling that I have down there. Because I still have a lot of numbness, which I'll get into. The next thing that I want to talk about is dilation. So if you don't know what that is, whenever you have surgery, um, you have to put things inside of you for 20 minutes a day, um, or multiple times a day, but 20 minutes each time to keep the hole from closing. And over time you do this less and less and it's fine. But in the beginning, you have to do it a fair amount. Um, some, some surgeons require four to five times a day in the beginning. My surgeon requires three times a day for the first three months, two times a day for the next three months, and one time a day for the next six months. And then after a year, you can usually dial it down to like once a week. Um, it kind of just depends on your body. Now, it can be it can be a bit of a painful process to be putting things in there because your body's still healing. Um, I also had some wound dehiscence, which I'll talk about in a bit. But putting that aside, um, dilation in the beginning was a little bit difficult, then it got easier, and then it got way harder. And it kind of freaked me out because I, I didn't understand what I was doing wrong. I didn't understand why it was becoming more difficult. I was even leaving it in there longer to like, <clears throat> try to make sure I'm not like losing depth or whatever. Um, there's four different sizes and I've been using the first two. I was fine using the second size that's a little bit bigger and then once this started getting harder I, I was like I can't even do that so I went back to the smaller one. Um, but I had to reach out to my surgeon and mention this to him and what he told me was either, I can't quite remember, but either that the tissue inside was healing and so it was becoming stronger and so you had to get it used to stretching or that your body was creating more tissue essentially that had not been stretched but either way <clears throat> basically there was tissue down there that needed to be stretched more than it did when I first had surgery which is why it was feeling like it was more difficult and he said sometimes patients feel like they're losing a little bit of depth it can be very difficult um, he recommended that I use the second size dilator for longer at night um, because there's a longer duration between my nighttime and my morning time, probably about 10 hours, whereas during the day it's like seven hours in between. Um, and now that it, that probably started around my second to third week, somewhere in there, but now that it's been about a month, it's roughly back to normal, I think. It's it's at least a lot easier than it was like a week or two ago. I will say that I do, I can't just put the second size in. I have, I, I've tried to do that no more. So <laughs> I have to put the, the smallest size in first, which I normally do anywhere between five to 15 minutes. And then I put the second size in and do that for usually about 15 minutes. But it works out fine. It works out well. Um, I do have, like I said, I had some wound dehiscence. Um, so if you don't know what that is, it's basically when you have an incision and like, it's like a line basically, but there's so much swelling that the incision actually breaks apart. Like one of the sutures snaps or whatever. And so the swelling then causes the skin that's on the inside of your body to then be protruded on the outside. And that sounds absolutely horrible and it's not fun, but it's not absolutely horrible. It's actually very common with the surgery. He said, they had it mentioned in the packet that he gave me and about, he said about 30% of patients have this and it typically happens right around the entrance um, because that's where the least amount of blood flow is so it doesn't heal as quick. So of course when I dilate, sometimes the dilator is rubbing against that raw skin which isn't as horrible as I thought it would be but it's still not good. I will also say, I don't know if if all or most surgeons do this, maybe Dr. Del Corral is the only one. I don't know, because I haven't really heard this from other people, but I am prescribed a muscle relaxer and I am also prescribed a low dose of a painkiller to help with dilation. So I do take that three times a day. Um, I do, 
I noticed a huge difference last night. I forgot to take them and I didn't realize it. And I was like, why does this dilation hurt so bad? Um, <laughs> and it was the part that hurt was that it was rubbing against the raw skin, basically. Um, for the most part, dilation isn't too terrible. It's mostly just uncomfortable, but I am still, like I said, on the two smaller sizes. So I don't know how that's going to be when I make my way up. We'll have to see. But regardless, things are going pretty well um, physically and everything. The wound dehiscence, um, I did have a little bit of an infection, I think. I'm pretty sure that's what it was because it just looked like that. There was like different colored stuff that should not have been there. But what I did uh, was I used an antibiotic cream that I had from him um, that I use during my dilation, the last dilation of the day to put on the inside of me. I put it on the dilator, put it inside of me, but you can also put it on the outside. So I've been doing that. And on top of that, my doctor also told me to go ahead and order some hydro gel. Um, I got mine on Amazon and it's basically just a gel that helps wounds heal quicker. And so once I started doing that, things seem to be working pretty quickly. I also went to my kitchen cabinet and found every single vitamin I could <laughs> and then just started taking that. So that also helped with the infection too, I believe. Um, also something that helped a lot and has always helped me when I've had a cold and stuff is airborne. It's like this little tablet that you put in water and it like fizzes and dissolves and then it tastes like I think I have the berry kind, but there's also orange and stuff. But anyways, it's basically just a super huge dose of vitamin C. So it'll help you to kick anything. So I've been taking that as well to hopefully help with my wound dehiscence. Um, from what I've heard, it can take a little while to heal. The only information that I could find though online about wound dehiscence was not in correlation with bottom surgery. It was with like abdominal surgery. I guess it's common with that um but I mean I have been noticing it healing and slowly like closing up but it does take a while but it's nothing to be worried about it does heal naturally on its own but it does take a little bit of time the next thing I want to talk about is libido because uh, so <laughs> so a lot of people from what I've seen or maybe not a lot but there's people who will have this surgery and then actually have to go on testosterone because they have no libido anymore. Because basically before surgery, you still have a little bit of testosterone in your body, which can help with your libido. I have had the opposite problem. I think I still have basically the same libido that I had before, but the fact that there's no solution to that, I can't do anything about it, has been a little bit frustrating for sure. Um, <laughs> I still have a scab on my most sensitive area down there. All the other scabs have gone away, but that scab has not. And on top of that, um, I'm not supposed to be messing around down there until week eight. So about two months after surgery. And some surgeons say three months, but he said two months is fine <clears throat> for self-exploration, but that three months is better for um three months is what you should wait for other people exploring down there so that's still another month so that's a, a bit frustrating but I try to just distract myself or whatever um I will say physically like in terms of like just existing day-to-day -day life things are relatively normal I can go to the grocery store and shop I can walk around my house, I can cook, I can clean, like I feel relatively back to normal except for the fact that I have to dilate and that I, I'm also taking the muscle relaxer and the painkiller. So, so that's been nice because I was expecting to feel more down, I guess. Um, I watched Maya Henry's video for her one month post-op. She's a trans YouTuber, but she, I don't think she makes many videos anymore, but she did a lot when I was first like coming to terms with my gender and stuff. And so I watched her videos a lot. Anyways, I watched her one month post-op and she was like, this is the first day in, since surgery that I've been able to like get up and get dressed and put makeup on because I feel 
just so exhausted and everything and I don't I don't feel that way and so I was kind of expecting to feel more down and more like <clears throat> just blah but I honestly feel relatively back to normal now I can't be like running or like lifting heavy things or stuff like that but I can do normal everyday tasks something that I want to add that I should have added when I was talking about dilation something that has helped me so you know dilation you want to be relaxed because if you're tense you're not going to be able to shove something up there so i usually just put on like uh lo-fi hip-hop music or whatever um but i also like like i'll have it pushing in with one hand and i'll be scrolling on my phone like reading stuff or whatever reading posts and stuff like that um because i notice that whenever i'm just laying there all I can think about is whatever the pain or the discomfort or whatever any of that stuff whereas if I'm kind of distracting myself I don't even realize it and the time flies by a lot quicker so if you can have a distraction I would definitely recommend that but it is kind of difficult because you also want to be relaxed and you don't want to be scrolling through TikTok and laughing at everything because that will tense up your body <laughs> and it'll hurt to be laughing while that's in there and stuff so it's kind of like a fine line but like if you maybe have an article that you want to read or a book if you like read it on your phone i don't know um but i noticed that when i'm reading posts on like instagram and stuff that kind of helps the time fly by a lot quicker in terms of like emotionally like how do i feel now that i've had surgery and everything so the dysphoria is gone which is super cool um i I actually already feel connected to what I have now. I thought it would take a long time for me to really like wrap my head around it. Like, I don't know. I just kind of expected this process to be very, very difficult because I didn't want to go into it thinking it would be easy and then have these difficulties come up and then have me be overwhelmed and upset that, you know, whatever, whatever. But I will say like, I, I actually, I'm going to, insert a video in just a minute but <clears throat> on it was on April 9th it was a Saturday I which so that was about two-ish weeks a week and a half after surgery my friend Trey has been staying with me on and off for the past few weeks just to make sure everything is going okay and he was away for the weekend because he hadn't seen his girlfriend and kids for a little while and obviously that's like important <laughs> so anyways I was at home alone and Normally, I'm not really wearing many clothes because it's better to keep airflow down there and whatever. And at that point, it was still kind of uncomfortable to wear clothes. But regardless, I decided I'm going to get dressed. So I put on a hoodie. I put on some basketball shorts, whatever. And I was just like sitting on my couch and I just felt really like at peace. Like I was like, like it just it felt really like, I don't know, like surreal or something like that it it was just like that's how it was and it was just fine now and like I really felt so like confident but also just like <sighs> like relieved almost I guess maybe that's a better word I felt very relieved and I felt I was like this is exactly what I thought I would feel like this is a this is the reason that I did this was that it was so that I could feel this way so it's like 4 15 or something right now um but i just wanted to check in to say like i'm sitting here like not really doing much but like i feel so happy that i had surgery like <laughs> i don't know like i don't know it's like hitting me differently right now but like in a really good way like because so far it's kind of just felt like like i have this like problem thing to take care of but like I don't know like right now I'm feeling really good and I feel like actually like I'm kind of like coming into like unison with my body or whatever um or something like that I'm not entirely sure but yeah I don't know it feels really nice and I just wanted to say that so and I was surprised to have that happen so early on especially because like you know, things are still swollen, there was still scabs at that point, there was the wound dehiscence, whatever, whatever, but I don't know, that was still, with all those things going on, that was still better than before surgery, so 
from here on out, I'm only like even more excited to see how it's gonna go. I'm I'm pleasantly surprised. Um, I talked about this in videos before, but I I did worry that there was a possibility that after surgery I would feel more like <clears throat> not more, but that I I might get a little like uncomfortable feeling like my body overall is too feminine because I'm on hormones and now I have what's considered to be female anatomy and a female chest and all this stuff and I thought like maybe I would start to feel like dysphoric or something or like that I needed it to be a little bit more balanced out um but no like I don't feel anything negative about my new body part which is like I don't know to me that's remarkable I wasn't expecting that um so I will say like I like I don't want to like paint a picture that like oh surgery is easy like willy-nilly whatever um I do think that it has been a little bit easier for me as well because <clears throat> I am on disability because of my cystic fibrosis and with that I'm not used to like I don't work a 40 hour week I work very minimally because I'm on disability and so my days currently aren't super different than what they were before surgery um, whereas if you're going from working 40 plus hours a week to then sitting at home alone and not necessarily having friends or family over or like whatever the case I think that could probably impact your mental health when you're recovering but I've been very fortunate that I've had friends who have stopped by I've had Trey who's been here a lot um and I, it's also not super different from my life before surgery <clears throat> so I do just want to put that out there that I think in that sense like that hasn't been very a jarring for me um but yeah uh, and one other thing too was like, I was wondering if like, like I basically like I feel like I, I've heard some people, you know, who come out of surgery, whether it's this surgery or a different trans surgery and kind of be like, you know, like feeling almost like a new person, um, <clears throat> which nothing wrong with that if that's how you feel. But um, I don't feel like a new person. I feel like the same exact person without dysphoria. And like, wow like it, it was I don't know it just it feels so much simpler to me than I was expecting and that's like to me that's good it's I thought I would have to do so much like mental work to like get to a place where I felt you know okay or like where I could really feel like me or like I don't I don't know exactly how to <clears throat> like I don't know exactly how to explain it but I just I thought that there would be more roadblocks, I guess, but things have been going really well, which is pretty cool. I will go back to work in two weeks. I do hair, so I work one day a week at the hair salon. So typically they say to wait three months to go back to work, um, but that's typically for people who are working full time, whereas I'm just working one day a week. And I will say like, I can walk around, I can stand. The other night I actually did my own hair, which took like a while and like, I don't, I didn't get weird about me like standing too long or like whatever. So I'm not super worried about that. Plus a lot of my job isn't just me standing because you know, I put color on somebody's hair and then it takes 30 minutes so I can go sit in the break room or sit and talk to them or whatever the case. So <clears throat> it's not all standing, so I'm not, worried about that really at all um but yeah uh, I do have a post-op appointment coming up in, on May 9th I think so hopefully that goes well my last post-op appointment went well it went fine um but yeah I think that is everything I, I think I'm kind of just rambling at this point but yeah um and I want to say Thank you to every single person who has reached out, you know, whether it's on my videos or on Instagram, just being like, hey, I'm thinking of you or whatever, like, that means so much to me. Um, <clears throat> it's, I know I've talked about this, but like, I just, I feel like I can't say it enough. Like, it really means a lot to me to have, like, 
I don't know, this little like community of people who cares about me and relates to me and all that kind of stuff because you know for a long time I really did feel like I was alone and it's very it's really nice to know that I'm not alone especially with you know I I had on one of my vlogs I had a moment um where I was very upset and stuff and I think in this society and specifically in a large portion of the family that I grew up with you know as trans people we're expected to like prove our validity and anything negative that we feel can be used against us or used as like evidence that like <clears throat> being trans is bad or like whatever like oh you're not really happy because you're having a moment basically and so it's really nice to have that kind of support where I can be authentic and vulnerable and not get shut down for that um it really means a lot and I I don't know I've just gotten so much like support and love and so many good things from so many of you and I just wanted to remind you that I am very very thankful for all that so um yeah I will see you probably in another month so <laughs> uh Thank you for listening.